Hello everyone. We will continue the topic cross applications. And as a part of that, we started with a new topic, how to send the data from one SAP client to another SAP client using ALE. And as a part of that, we discussed the first two steps. The first two steps is totally, totally, it's a basis person responsibility. The basis person will create the logical systems. Then the basis person will assign the SAP client to the logical system. Now we will proceed further. Yes, to perform the practical for this particular topic, you need two SAP client. It might be the case you have, you do not have the availability of two SAP clients, but that's not a concern. At least if you listen the videos also, because always we have to perform these set of static steps whenever we want to send the data from one SAP client to another SAP client. Now we will move on to the third step. Again, third step is again purely, purely a SAP basis person responsibility. So whenever we want to send that data, so first three steps is totally, totally a basis person responsibility. So what is the third step? Create and check the RFC connection using the transaction code SM59. See, you have one SAP client you have another SAP client. So there must be a connection between the system because you are sending the data from one SAP client to another SAP client. So to go for RFC connection between the systems, the basis person will do this with the help of SM59 transaction code and we will check the connection because without RFC connection, we cannot send the data from one SAP client to another SAP client. Suppose if I will go to SM59 transaction code. So I have two clients. This is 100 client and this is 200 client. So in 100 client, I will go to SM59 transaction code and I will see, yes, is there a RFC destination? Is there a RFC connection for the client 200? I will go to SM59 transaction code and you can see title bar is itself configuration of RFC connection. So basis person will configure the RFC connection with the help of this transaction code. Now I will expand the ABAP connections. And you can see what is the logical system. If you remember in the first step itself, we discussed what is the logical system you gave for client 200. A for HCLNT 200 and you all know logical system is a unique identification. So always, always you will refer with the help of this particular logical system. It's a unique ID for the client 200. Now we are in 100 client. So we will check is there a RFC connection for this particular client 200. If you see behind this logical system, which client is mapped 200 client, what was the second step we did? Assign logical system to the client. 
So for this particular logical system, what was the client we mapped? 200 client. So this is our source system. Now we will check, is there a RFC connection? Yes, for the client 200. Now I will simply, simply double click. Now we will go for connection test. We will check. Is there a connection between the source and the receiver? I will go for connection test. And you can see our connection is successful. We are able to see the connection or you can check in that way also. Just click here on to remote logon. Whenever you will click on to remote logon, it will take you to the another client of SAP means it will take us to the 200 client. If I will click on to remote logon, you can see we got a SAP window and you can see what is the client number 200. So from the 100 system, yes, we have a connection to the 200 from the 100 client. We have a connection to the 200 client. I only showed you the demo for the RFC connection because I will not change the configurations and you should also also not do anything with the configurations. Always connect with your basis person whenever you want to create the logical systems, whenever you want to assign the clients to the logical system, whenever you want to go for RFC connections between the system, always, always check with basis person. Basis person will do all these activities. You can simply do one thing from the source client. Just check. Are you able to go to the receiver client? Is there a connection between the source and the receiver? And yes, we have a connection between the source and the receiver. So what is the third step? Create and check the RFC connection using the transaction code SM59. So first three steps are totally, totally a basis person responsibility. Now we will come on to next step. So next two steps are very, very important. One is port and another is partner profile. If you remember when we covered, yes, previous topics of cross application, we cover two major things as a part of IDOC settings. Whenever you want to fire IDOCs, always, always two important things are there. One is port and another is partner profile. Without port and partner profile, you cannot do anything, nothing, because ultimately your IDOCs, yes, how, how IDOCs will fire? Yes, with the help of these two things, port and partner profile. Now, if I will come on to the port, you all know what is port. A port is a technical link between the sender and the receiver. If you want a full explanation in the same playlist, I explained so much detail about the port. A port is a technical link between the sender and the receiver. And yes, we covered at that point of time, ports are of two types, file port and TRFC port. If I will go to the slide of the port, port is the technical link, yes, Whenever we want to send the IDOCs, yes, ports act as a communication channel. If you remember in the previous video, I discussed for SMTP, we have a different port. For FTP, we have a different port. The purpose of port is to distribute that 
traffic and yes port are of two types trfc port and file port trfc port is called as transactional port now in our current requirement we will go for trfc port why why we will go for trfc port because we make the rfc connection just in the previous step we make the rfc connection using which transaction code sm59 with from the 100 client we configured the rfc destination for 200 client using which transaction code s m59 so we will go for which particular port trfc port transactional rfc port whenever you have the rfc connections using sm59 always always go for trfc port now i will go to we19 trans so i will go to we20 transaction port to create the sorry i will go for we21 see we20 is for partner profile i will go to we21 transaction port and i will create a port port so I will go to WE21 transaction code. This is our source client, 100 client, yes. So I will go to WE21 transaction code. Now I will go for TRFC port. So I will put the cursor here. I will click on to create button. Now you can go for generate port name also. You can go for own port name also. If you will go for generate port name, SAP will generate the port number. In case of own port name, you can provide the port name. Suppose we will ask SAP to generate the port. I will go for OK. And you can see SAP generated a port which is ending with 60. Suppose I will say port for client 200. Now we need to give the RFC connection and yes we will pass the RFC connection. If I will go to F4 help, it will show me all RFC connections which are available in SM59 transaction code. And what is your RFC destination? A4HCLNT200. So this is our port number for this particular RFC destination. So whenever we will go for sending the IDOCs, our IDOCs will go through this particular port only because port will help us in sending the IDOCs. It is a communication channel. So we created the port for this particular RFC destination. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we covered the third and the fourth step. What is the third step? Third step is again basis person responsibility. Basis person will create a RFC connection, yes, through the receiver system. And we checked, yes, there is a RFC connection. You can check the RFC connection by clicking on to connection test button or you can click on to remote logon. It will take you to the 200 client. From a technical person perspective, you can check, yes. If it is not working, you can ask with the basis person. So first three steps. 
is totally basis person responsibility. Now, two major things are always as a part of IDOC settings. One is your port and another is partner profile. So we will create the port through WE21 transaction port. By mistake, I told WE20. No, it's WE21. WE20 is for the partner profile. You have to create a TRFC port because you have a RFC connection using SM59 transaction code. So we went to WE21 transaction code. We generated the port number for uh, the RFC destination A4HCLNT200. Ultimately, it's a unique ID for the client 200. And yes, in the next video, we will simply, simply go for the partner profile and we will proceed with the next steps. So that's it in this video. Thank you.